frozen it certainly, again. Well, speaking of but freezing. I can't hear you. Oh, that's good. Well, I was going to say, speaking of freezing, how much snow do you have? Uh, none. We have rain. Really? Did it miss you? Because yeah, uh, you know, uh, all you guys up there in the Midwest got snow. Nope. That's a lie. That's a big fat lie. Yeah, it's got to be cold though. It's eighty degrees here today. Eighty, I think the high was eighty-one, and in Minnesota today, I looked and it was thirty-four. Yeah, I, yeah, they have shitty weather there. You are still frozen in place. Now I really? see you. So you can hear bit. me, so that's that's all that matters. Yeah, you're herky jerky though. You're herky jerky. That's what I call you anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna change my name from my Sharona <laughs> to herky jerky. <laughs> Forty-eight degrees right now in Jefferson, Wisconsin. That's you see heat wave. That it cold is a heat now. wave. You're going to have a polar vortex. Why are we having such a herky jerky time here? Damn You're it. a herky jerky time. I'm still recording. Maybe so. it'll be better if we record. I am recording. Oh well, that's a lot better then. <laughs> You're just you are herky jerky. Well, as long as you can hear me, is my voice herky jerky? Yes, as long as you can hear me, is how it sounds. Well, that's just me. I'm I, maybe I have my sinuses <laughs> are starting to fill up. <laughs> maybe Pey- so. Peyton has been sick all week. I know. So, can we tell everyone that you tested yeah. negative? I didn't test. It was just Peyton. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about something else. Oh, yeah. I knew you were money on the bed. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Did we talk about it in the last podcast? So, folks, we, we recorded. Oh. Uh, we we are actually recording back to back because John and I are going to have uh, a few weeks here where we're not going to be able to connect because of our schedules. So, we we are we are recording back to back episodes. Um, not oh, two I'm glad you said episodes because we're not sitting back to back. That would be right. weird. That yeah. would be. I have stories though, so we'll talk about those <laughs> offline. Sure. How about John? Anyway. We so wow. we've been doing episodes uh, one every every day uh, for for a couple of days because we again want some some for you guys to listen to so we don't have to revert back to our old episodes and, and do a classic even though we do sometimes use that in in a pinch and sometimes um, enjoy listening to them as well absolutely some of yes. our, our our greatest uh, numbers have come from our classic episodes so anyway we <laughs> earlier in the week. Uh, I got a phone call uh, from my wife who said my daughter was not feeling well and all of the symptoms that she had were the same symptoms that we know as COVID. COVID-esque. COVID-esque. They were very COVID-esque. She had a low-grade fever. She had aches and pains. She you know, her, uh, Shortness of breath, on and on and on and on. So my first response, of course, was, fuck. <laughs> So I came home because I was on the road and I didn't want to spread the love, quote unquote. I'm putting quotes in the air, spread the love. You are. And uh, my wife went and had my daughter tested uh, at one of the uh, testing centers here in Nashville. And so yesterday, while John and I were recording, uh, we decided not to really talk about it unless we did. And I'll have to listen back because I haven't even edited that episode yet. Maybe we did talk about it. Who knows? (laughs) So I can't use our patented line. We've talked about it before because I just don't know. (laughs) If we have, I apologize. If not, we haven't. So yesterday, we didn't know. And then today, um, uh, earlier this afternoon, my wife finally got a call from the testing center and said Peyton was negative. So, which is very, very nice. It's it's just a cold. I've never been so happy Mm -hmm. to see my daughter suffer from a cold. Yes. No kidding. Yeah. That, uh, and again, I, I think. My both my nephew and my brother have had it. Mm-hmm. You've had it. I've had it, but before I knew that I had it. Uh, but my nephew, who's younger, was just a, a college age, or older than college age. I'm sorry, Sawyer. Um, but he he just had sniffles. Really, that yeah. was his only thing. And you know, maybe drawn out a little bit longer, but that was it. And yeah, that was his only symptom. And- that's pretty much all Peyton has right now. She yep. she didn't feel good that that first night, mm-hmm. but then the next day, no fever. All she she her nose is running. It's like she has she probably has a sinus infection. Yeah. Um, but it, that's that's about all it is. Yeah. Um, no fever, no coughing, unless she doesn't have enough water. But you know, awesome. No no real bad symptoms. So it wouldn't have been a bad case. It's just mm-hmm. the knowledge that you have that in the house and 
You know, my wife can't go to the studio for 14 days. I can't hit the road for 14 days. You know, we're stuck at home. So, um, yeah, again, I've never been so happy that my daughter has the sniffles. (laughs) Well, that's awesome and great news for sure. Yeah, I thought so. Great news. Not that you wouldn't like being quarantined for two weeks. Yeah, why not? Because it's not like it'd be any different from the last well, that's six what, months. That's what I was going to say. It's not like it's a big change. Yeah. The, the only problem, and I know we did talk about this briefly last week, was I was staying at my second favorite hotel in Louisville. Yes. No, we didn't really dive into it, though. Yeah. Well, let's. Do you have, do you have your favorite uh, hotels in cities? Like, do you, do you rank your hotels? I know you don't go to specific cities anymore like we did um, – before but you know i i i go to louisville i go to lexington i go to uh indianapolis i go to cincinnati so i'm i've got my cities and i've got my favorite pockets within those cities that i try to hit as long as they're within my budget do you do you have any that you can think of of, off the top of your head and why absolutely um i loved the uh, marriott in uh uh saint croix (laughs) That was, very, uh, yeah. that was a resort. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't travel there much. Yes, of course there are. Um, there one in particular, and it may sound odd. It's kind of an out of the way place in Orange County, California, and it's uh, it's a Marriott Suites that fit within our room budget, and it it was in uh, Garden Grove, California, and every night is really funny. Every night. When the uh, uh, nine o'clock rolls around, you can see the Disney fireworks from Disneyland in Anaheim. Oh, cool. Yeah, and usually right out my window. Yeah, so, not right now though. Um, probably not as much now, but back then when yeah. I was going there, yes, it was lots of uh, Disney fire. Yeah, probably now that's all they could do is shoot fireworks. Yeah, well, even if they can do that, I'm not even sure about that. So, you know, I don't like to talk about politics, and we're going to get back to the hotel subject <laughs> here in just a second. But yes. you just but the you got me down a rabbit up. hole. Oh, okay. you got me down a you got me down a mouse hole. How does one do that? You because you're talking about Disney, and oh. and you know this this whole thing. The the week all of this started, we were supposed to be in Disney World. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so so going back, and I know we talked about that on the podcast, mm-hmm. um, but. I, I've been following because we were planning our trip and we're trying to continue to plan our trip. So we do watch some um, news outlets on YouTube about Disney and we follow a lot of the news about mm-hmm. Disney uh, just, just so we know when we can start truly planning. Mm-hmm. We could go to Disney World right now if we wanted to. The only problem is this is Peyton's first time mm-hmm. and we have made the choice as a couple, my wife and I, to make sure that the first time she goes, we don't have to worry about masks and uh, COVID and all that junk that and not having a while COVID. though. It wow. could be. She could be 26. She it may be, maybe. <laughs> no, come on. There's gonna be a vaccine like you know before the election. Uh did I say that wow. out loud on a podcast? Wow, wow me? Mm-hmm. Me? Breaking news. Speaking of that breaking news sound. Breaking yeah I got that. Thanks. I was trying to ignore it. Did it for the younger listeners. Oh right. Right. So again, not, I'm not big on politics, but the one thing that I find very interesting with all the podcasts that I listen to, most of them coming from Los Angeles or coming from California, um, some who have moved from California to various places like Austin. I don't know who that is, uh, but we're listening to a lot of, of how California compared to a lot of other states have a lot of different rules when it comes to everything that's happening. And a lot of these podcast people are saying, admitting that they live in a bubble because they're getting out. Like I'll use Dax as the example. Yep. Normally he does his podcast from his home in LA. This week he was in Michigan mm. visiting family. And he's like, it is completely different here mm. and it's a completely different environment. And, and I knew our conversations with coworkers who live in Michigan, they consider themselves fairly locked down still. But I guess compared to California, it's just completely different. But all that to say is they they still have not allowed Disneyland to reopen in California, and that's that's been a, you know fairly newsworthy um, and and for for better or for worse for right or for wrong. But with all the conversations, and I'm I'm getting to the end of my rabbit hole here, with all the conversations that I'm hearing from these podcasts and from friends that live in LA and 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 seeing the news and things like that, I would wonder. 
if someone like the Disney Corporation, someone that large, with with something as important to the economy of Southern California as Disneyland and all of the studios that are associated with it, with all of this that's going on, if they just said, fine, you won't let us open, peace out. Well, what the government in California would actually do. So it is it is um, very interesting that you bring this up. And uh, <laughs> so just a couple of things. You've gotten me watching a couple of podcasts. One watching in particular, a- watching, truly on YouTube. Uh, uh, I see that the guys, this is a hint. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys and girls. This is a hint. Yes. That John wants me to start doing video. I do. Uh, yeah. And so does our buddy Mike. By yeah, the way, I, yeah, we'll, we'll get to Mike that. here in a minute. Yeah, we will get to and, Mike. And just to make you feel Mr. better, I'm, I'm holding this up that I just, I've cleaned and, and gotten this ready. Oh, So um, we're getting closer. This, I'm holding up my DSLR he's, people. He, he's holding up a vibrator. <laughs> it does when you when you hit the shutter button. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It makes you shudder. Uh, so my the podcast, oddly enough, that I've been watching on YouTube, actually, is the Candace Owens Show. And if you know Candace Owens, she is, well, she's conservative. There's no question. Um, But she had on Adam Carolla, who is also conservative. Uh, They had. I did not know. Yeah, he is. Unlike Jimmy Kimmel, that used to be on the man show with him. (laughs) They are two totally uh, uh, different directions politically. Uh, but I mean, and good examples a, of how that they can still be friends, by the way. Say that again. That That's still a good example of how they can still be friends. Exactly. I totally agree. And I think that's something that's missing from what goes 100%, on today. Which is why I bring like, it up. You know, yeah. I, and, and you're right. I knew it wasn't, I knew it was more than just anecdotal. But they had some great points. One thing Carolla said, the dude is brilliant. He is a smart man, funny as well. But to listen to him, on this particular episode on Candace Owens show, he said something that really struck me. He said, and he lives in California. He said, you know, the politicians, they say, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And this is what we're going to do. And they try to control the environment. And since you started this, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what he said. I'm not repping it in any way. Uh, although I do agree with him, but that's off the record. Um, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> but he said, you know what? All these business people, all these people that own businesses are incredibly smarter than the politicians. They are so much wiser. They understand business and finance so much better, and they hold the keys. Because if they make it so oppressive to do business, and let's pick a state, California, let's say, people who own businesses will leave. And that's what's happened. California has experienced that to a small degree to this point. But so have states like Connecticut, so have states like New York. Uh, and, And by being more oppressive, these businesses will leave. Now, there may be exceptions to that, such as Disneyland, Disney World out of Florida. How could they leave? I I don't, you've got all of your assets in land. Yeah. Essentially. So I, yeah. they may have them over a barrel, I mean, I think but again, if you're, I think that's kind of the point though, butt. is yeah. all of, all of it is that, yeah, they've got all of their stuff there, but if they just made the decision out of, there are very few companies that are that size in the world that could just say, as I put it earlier, peace out. Oh, for sure. But, uh, but I think that, um, and they could go anywhere. They, I mean, they could just shut down the park. They don't need the park. Well, no, and and Florida's open, right? Disney World. Yeah, Florida's open. But, uh, all of them except California right now is op- are okay. open. Okay, I, I just um, I I don't know as that would be a feasibility for them because you have all these employees. You have, uh, I mean, yeah, all these certainly do who, it. But the problem is all these employees who mm-hmm. aren't working right now. Yeah, that's true too. That's an excellent point. Yeah. So, so anyway, you I don't want to get permanent politics of it. It was I just. Know, but I think it's. I think it's a fair point, and whether it's political or not, I, I think it. And some things are beyond policy, and you just need to say this is not right. This is something that, again, uh, it's a Margaret Thatcher thing. 
the problem with socialism is at some point you run out of other people's money. Yeah. Margaret and, Thatcher, and, that saucy minx. And she was a saucy minx. Her teeth were not awesome, but she was <laughs> um she was saucy. Tea and crumpets. She loved that. <laughs> Do you know where that line is from? No, I hope it's not a position. <laughs> no, it's, it's well, maybe. Oh. It's from the movie Love Actually. Tea and it's crumpets, that's the first time it was ever said. No, 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 no. Oh. Margaret Thatcher, that saucy minx. Oh, I thought you meant tea and crumpets. No, 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 no. <laughs> that would have been funnier. Yeah, it yeah. would have been. All right, pause for a second. I want you to watch that video I just sent you. Okay. Pottyus interrupt us. Uh, I just thought it was very interesting and an interesting thought and an interesting rabbit hole to go down. But I, yeah. I agree with you. You know, it's just it's one of those things. You do have a lot of people moving out, and you, I, I've always said, I, I, I've said this a lot, and again, not trying to be political or even, you know, and you've said on the podcast, I, I you never really know what side I'm on, but this, this kind of, when I look at California and I have a degree from the University of Southern yes, California, I love California, the state. I do too. What's not to love? If I wouldn't, if it weren't for the politics and the taxes, yes. I'd move there in a heartbeat. Yeah, uh, it's it's unfortunate. It, it really is yep. because I, I will I will tell you, and I've probably told you before that San Francisco is one of the most beautiful cities mm -hmm. I've ever seen, and I've seen yes. some really beautiful cities. Yes, that is one of them, and and it's just a shame what's become of it, and and it's not just you know, the homeless problem or, you know, things related to that, but it's also the ridiculous real estate prices, yes. which by the way, are down 30% over the last six months. Yep. Yeah, but well, over the last six months, but it's oh. also people are moving out. Well, that's it. That's the point. They actually have properties available, which has been unheard of for yeah. years and years and years. And, and it's, it really is sad. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, well, and, and the, the bad part about that, and it's not just the West Coast that's causing this, but here in Nashville, the reason we are seeing such a, a, a boom with our property values yep. is because you've got people from California or people from New York coming in and going, that house is only half million dollars. Exactly. That cost me three million in California. Yeah, so I'll buy that. I'll pay cash. This becomes the the weird piece of it. And again, I know. If you are from, if you're on the left and you agree with what Gavin's doing and all of that, that's fine. You are, as Nick intimated, you're welcome to your opinion. So we're not, uh, we're not saying everyone should be this way or everyone should believe as we do. But there are certain issues that really don't make sense. Where if you don't like the policies in, let's say. Um, uh, LA and you say, Oh my gosh, I hate what they're doing. And, and I can't afford to live here. The taxes are too high. I'm out. And then you move to Colorado. Stop voting for the same type of people that raise the stupid taxes in California. It's yep. like a vicious cycle that I just don't understand. And well, it's happening and in so, Texas. It's yes, happening and, in Arizona. It's happening yes. in Colorado. And again, uh, look, you can believe and you can be you can be uh, fiscally and socially cons or conservative or liberal, whichever you prefer. But if you if one thing drives you out, why would you replicate that at the exactly. new place? And so, yep. again, I don't pretend to have all the answers. That's one I just don't understand. Well, you you and I were talking offline uh, before the podcast about the uh, the last Joe Rogan episode I was I was listening to. Yep. And, and he had, um, was it Wesley, what was this Wesley Hunt? I think, yeah, right. which is a, a conservative, um, man running for Senate, uh, out of Houston, mm -hmm. uh, former Apache pilot. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it, that has nothing to do with it, but that was basically what the whole conversation was. You echoed it perfectly. And we didn't even talk about that part of the podcast, but that's exactly what both he and, uh, Wesley were talking about was all of, because Joe Rogan just moved from LA yeah. to California. Yeah. And that's exactly what both of them said is if you want to move because you don't like something and you move somewhere else, you know, that's what makes America great is you have the ability to do that and you can move to a community that's very similar to 
what you believe, yep. but don't move to another community and bring those same things with you that you hate it. And you don't have to throw away all your values. Or, I mean, that's not the point. The point no. is, politically speaking, why just bring in the same types of personalities? And so instantly, if he agrees, if we hold the same, then I think he's brilliant. Uh, but I don't know <laughs> that to be the fact. <laughs> right. I'm sure he's much smarter than I am. There's well, a little I mean, doubt that's about not, that. Not hard to, that wasn't really up for uh, up for discussion. Anyway, right. uh, Ben Shapiro also leaving California, taking his whole business and leaving California and coming to Nashville, if I'm not mistaken. Really? I didn't hear that. Nashville was one of the cities. Maybe maybe he ended up somewhere else. But I thought, I, I know he was at least considering Nashville. Yeah, a lot of people are. Nashville yeah. is one of those it places, just like Austin, just like right. Denver. Right, right. You know, it's and and that's again that's and again we were talking about that offline uh, too or maybe it was online I don't know it's it's back and forth but that's one of the reasons the property values here are just so so high not I mean we're not California high by any means but we're still pretty high and our taxes are going up anyway so um, that's I think that's enough about our rant on on that sort of thing I that was I'm still I, I, and, ranting. I don't mind, you know, if, if our listeners want to get back to us and say, hey, we don't mind you guys talking about it, that's fine. I just, I don't really want to make this a political podcast because that's not what the purpose of this is. And I don't really, from the start. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think we have enough of that in the world. So I'm going to stop my complaining and my ranting and move on to something <laughs> a little bit more fun, like dun, 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 you like that intro for a potty corner? I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Oh, well, yeah, that's, you should stop drinking that so we much. We could do, no, I should start earlier. I think that was fine, but you you have brilliance when it comes to bringing in music in the background, and, and I've witnessed it. So I think you need to bring in something maybe professionally done, although that one really sounded like it could have been professionally done. <laughs> you should wait for the eye rolls until we're actually on video. I don't care as long as you receive the eye rolls. I don't mind. Right, okay, there you go. That works. So anyway, Potty Corner. What do we got today in Potty Corner? We have something pretty cool. I got an email from uh, our buddy, Mike Osterlink. And Mike, um, uh, he is, dude is a passionate guy. And if you happen to catch Mike when he was on the podcast with us, we were talking, I think we were talking Jeeps back then, weren't we, Nick? Yes, we were. And it was fun, and he's he's very uh, well spoken and knows Jeeps well because he's owned them, and um, and uh, he uh, also is uh, just he loves cars, loves vehicles, and so he just reached out to me, and we were talking about uh, back and forth a little bit about the new GMC Hummer, and kind of resurrecting, if you will, the Hummer nameplate, but under the GMC shield, and who knows you know, if it will branch back out to its own division again, I don't know. But I think, I think GMC is a great place to bring it out. If you're not yeah. familiar with it though, the new uh, Hummer GMC Hummer, and they call it the uh, first edition, if I'm not mistaken, um, is going to be coming out before too long. I don't know if they've given an exact date yet, but uh, it is uh, going to be all electric. And right. it is going to have three electric motors and uh, will make somewhere around a thousand horsepower. Jeez. I know. And here's the get this. And this is a big vehicle. This is a, it's not unlike, it's not as big as the old H1 Hummer or the H2, but it, um, <laughs> it, it looks like it's about the same size as a, a, a GMC pickup. So uh, Sierra or whatever, mm -hmm. it just looks like it's about that size. Right. And it uh, will do zero to 60 in three seconds. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? That's the, that's the estimate anyway from GM. Car and driver was chomping at the bit to find out uh, when they could test one. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I am too. So uh, here, here are my initial, and, and I sure, will please. admit that I haven't done that much research um, since, since I saw this, uh, yeah. that you sent it to me from Mike. But uh, one, it the the i don't know if it was the images um that are of the actual vehicle or if it's just the the mock-ups but prototype yeah prototype it looks very similar to it's kind of a cross between the old hummer a cross between the new bronco and rivian 
which I, I'm bringing that up last because yeah. GM also invested in Rivian. And that was something that was fascinated. I was fascinated with because also Amazon also invested heavily into Rivian, which is, yep. if you're not familiar with Rivian, Rivian is the electric truck company. They have not produced a vehicle yet. Nope. But this, I, when I saw that, the very first thing that came to mind was, that's a freaking Rivian. <laughs> well, I think that's interesting. I, I GM didn't, I think when GM invests in other vehicles, it's often, it's not, it's very seldom, I should say, to take technology and utilize it. They have some pretty strong and pretty deep experience. Oh, with absolutely. Electric it's vehicles. GM. Yeah, exactly. With every uh, vehicle. And then, but they've been doing it for a long time. And people might say, well, look at Tesla. And, and there's no question the industry has learned from Tesla. Um, Tesla, however, Unlike main mainline vehicles like Ford or GM or Mercedes, it has one of the lowest initial quality scores of any vehicle, and so if you own General Motors, you cannot allow that to happen. So right. you might say they're forward thinking and they're brilliant, and you would be right about Tesla. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they don't have to. They don't have to live up to the layers. Of, uh, of quality that are necessary when you are selling, you know, uh, 10 million cars rather than 10,000 cars. Right, right. Which is a little little different story. But I, yeah. I agree with your <clears throat> with your analysis. I think it's, it's going to be bigger than the Bronco. I, I mean, I believe it's going to be. I don't, I don't know. know that Bronco is, the, the Bronco is pretty big. I mean, it's. It, yeah, I, I think, and I could be wrong because I haven't seen the Bronco in person. I envision it about the size of the Edge, if not a little uh, smaller. No, no, bigger. It's bigger than the it's Edge. Bigger than the Edge. Okay. Yeah. I've only seen. I, I've seen one, and I, I didn't get too close to it. But it, yeah, it, or at least it looked bigger than the Edge. Um, well, well, but it could have been it looked bigger because it was beefier. I don't know. <laughs> I look bigger because I'm beefier than you exactly. are. Exactly. <laughs> Me. Even though it, we, if we were to compare egos, mine is much bigger. It is, but it's not as beefy. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, okay. So I love what they're doing. I love the idea. Mike's question for Potty Corner, and I know we're finally getting to it, is which would you lean toward? The and he gave me some uh, some abbreviations, which you know I love. HEV, which is hybrid electric vehicle. And if you're talking about examples of that, it might be something like the uh, the Hyundai Sonata or the Honda Civic, the Camry hybrids, all of those hybrids. Um, they are a combo of fuel and electric. Um, he asked also about the PHEVs, which I, look, I, in California, when I travel there, they had the ULEV, ultra low emission vehicle, and they have a special lane for it. So unless you're on a motorcycle, you have to have a ULEV. Um, but that these days, PHEV is a plug-in hybrid, hybrid. electric mm -hmm. vehicle. Yeah. And uh, those are, well, like the Nissan Leaf uh, and uh, Honda Clarity, which is a new new vehicle, uh, the, the Bolt, the Chevy Bolt, um, and then just general EVs. So, and there are a lot of them out there now, and they're but they're mostly offered as, oh, by the way, we have this. Like uh, yeah. there's a, a mini, a mini Cooper electric mini, right? And which gets some pretty good ratings, by the way. And I, oh, yeah. I love minis; they're cool, and you get the raw power of electric yeah. these days. But it's the it's the uh, the range that is yeah. a, a little that's, weird. There's the rub on, on pretty much all of that because you know here's here's the other thing. Electric SUVs, electric sports cars, mm -hmm. these aren't anything new, especially in California. Some of, I don't know. Do you look at uh, Omaze at all? You've uh, heard of Omaze? I'm, I'm familiar with it. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> Omaze once in a while will um, put up. It's not an auction. It is a raffle. It's a way for people to raise money. Yes. And and you you buy raffle tickets basically, yep. and you can win certain things. It can be an experience. It can be a vehicle. It can be a camper. I've I've spent money to try to win a a, a Mercedes Sprinter van. Nice. Um, and but there are other. Sometimes they come up with things like a 1968 Porsche 911, 
converted to fully electric. <laughs> I think I saw that one. If yeah, I'm it was hot, man. It yeah. was a beautiful car. Yeah. Um, but it, so there are people out there that have been converting vehicles for a very long time sure. to to electric. Um, the uh, the old uh, what's the Toyota um, Prius? No, not the Prius. The, the truck, the the Jeep like vehicle. Oh, um, the uh, F. Oh gosh, yeah. FJ Cruiser mean. or FJ, yeah, right? Yeah, something like that, and. Um, or even uh, the um, Land Cruisers, the old oh, Land sure. Cruisers and yeah. things like that, converting them to full electric. And I, mm-hmm. th- it's just awesome. They yeah. really are. They're so cool. Very expensive. But uh, I think now I, even the, the mainstream car companies are finally starting to see, uh, look into to creating a vehicle that's mainstream that they can sell that people will actually like but i agree with you i think the biggest problem with that and the biggest problem for me i would drive an electric car today if i got the range required to be able to get me from home to my all of my meetings and then wherever i need to go you know and the infrastructure is coming around it is coming and Mm -hmm. there are more uh of the um oh gosh well i can't think what they're called but it's like the the extra charge the the high charging stations um which, for example, the new Hummer, uh, which has a 350 mile range, which is not too bad. Not bad for it. Well, I mean, it probably has more than the gas Hummer. Um, <laughs> probably, <That's- laughs> as I recall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but the there are a couple of buts to that. One is that uh, if you can find one of the high charging stations, it is. Um, uh, it takes 10 minutes and you get an extra hundred miles, which is pretty good. Also a yeah. kind of a nice opportunity, but what they don't tell you often about electric vehicles and Tesla has been a prime example of this in uh, colder climates, they don't do well in cold. Yeah. I've heard that. They just don't. And yeah. and so I have a buddy who has uh, one of the hundred and some thousand dollar Teslas and, and he says, yeah, they're not, they're really cold blooded. <laughs> Wow. So, okay. I, I guess it's what, what's important to you. And, and he's a guy who can afford whatever he wants, this friend of mine. But <clears throat> I, that to me is is the selling feature for most of them is yeah. that look what I can do. And and frankly, because of the $115,000 price tag on the new Hummer, the first yeah. one, um, it will also be, uh, they'll sell them. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely they'll sell them. They will. But it's going to be to not to Mr. and Mrs. Mainstream, no, well, whose other yeah. choice is even a BMW M3. You're not going yeah. to say, I'm looking at an M3 or a Hummer. Oh, uh, no. Right, right. Because it's substantially less expensive to get into right. the M3 or whatever. So that, it's not about. That said, I think uh, going back to Tesla, Tesla's been uh, over $100,000 for a while. Sure. And But not all of them. Not all of them. No, yeah. there, there are definitely some that are a little bit more attainable. But yep. That said, if you we work in the business, and over the last few years, all I've seen is the price of vehicles climb and climb and climb. Sure. I was looking at a Yukon, and it was a it wasn't even a Denali; it was an SLT. Yep. And you just look at the SLT, and and it wasn't fully loaded. It was just a regular base base quote putting quotes in the air yeah. base SLT. Yep. And it was still seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. And a beautiful and that's for vehicle. A Yukon. Oh We're yeah, not it's a gorgeous. Taken vehicle. away from it, it's an yeah. amazing vehicle in the same, uh, the same platform as the Escalade, which yeah. is also an an impressive vehicle. But it's another, you know, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand from there. Right. Yeah. To get into a nice Escalade. So I, right, I'm with you. I, I think uh, here's what I believe, and we need to have have my buddy Matt on sometime. Matt is. Uh, uh, is a master electrician and project manager for a big uh, a contractor, electrical contractor. That's all they do. That dude is so well read, and he talks about. Um, <laughs> we we just a real quick quick input on this. We talked about we drove uh, outside of Vegas, and on the way to California, right by the border, there is a massive solar field. And I'm looking at this thing, and I don't know how many square miles, but it, it was massive for as far as the eye could see in any direction. You have solar panels. And he said to me, he said, any idea how much that generates? 
<laughs> and I said, well, I have no idea, but it's got to be huge. I mean, just look at all the, and storage, you know, they have batteries to store and, and all of that. And he said about the same as one of the diesel generators we put in on work sites. Wow. One diesel one. generator. Yeah. So and look, solar is great. I love the idea. We don't have enough land mass to to really utilize well, it so that it okay, produces so a lot. You two have to store the battery. That. Yes. Yeah. Two, two, uh, one is kind of a, a pseudo argument. The other one is reverting back to so, what we were saying earlier because that uh, Joe Rogan was also saying something very similar. And now Rogan. He owns a Tesla, so he and he loves his Tesla. Sure. But one thing that he was saying on one of his podcasts could have been the last one too, is that it is wonderful and it's great. For example, California wants to go completely EV by the end of twenty thirty five. Wants to? They're mandating it. They're mandating it, right? Yes. But so the whole reason is to be friendlier to the environment. However. To get yes. the lithium out of the ground that it yes. requires to get all of those vehicles is as damaging as fossil fuels. It's more damaging. It's more damaging. And it's, yes. so, and that's not to say that we shouldn't be looking for alternatives. We absolutely 100% should. Agreed. But these are not the answer. And that's uh, kind of what he was saying. So yeah. that, that said, to your point that we need a larger landmass, we have a larger landmass, and there is technology that's out there. It just needs to be cheaper, mm -hmm. where they have companies that are converting highways, freeways, yes, into seen solar that. panels. I've seen it. That's plenty. It, it, it's plenty, but then storage becomes the issue. Storage becomes the issue, exactly. And, and so there are other things. And, and again, the only reason I brought up Matt is because truly, whatever little I know. I, I, it's minuscule compared to what he does. And, and he's looking at, <laughs> and plus he knows legal pieces of it too, being in the electric industry. Anyway, it would be fun to hear his take on it. So yeah, back we should to, do that. Back to Mike's. Um, and I'm, I know he wasn't really asking us to choose. I, so do you ever look at a Prius and you get a sense of who drives it? <laughs> yes. Okay. And I'm, no offense I'm just going to leave it there. Prius. Yeah. And now gonna... that's exactly where I'll leave it to. And I don't mean it as an insult. I have friends who own them and swear by them. And God bless you. That's fine. You drive what you want to drive. That's the beauty of, of uh, this country, if you ask me. Um, I, there's kind of a, there's something that goes along with it. Now, if you see somebody... Uh, with a with the high dollar uh, Tesla, I might think the same thing. The Gullwing SUV, have you seen that? I don't know what it's called, the Tesla, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't. The, it's pretty yeah. cool. It is pretty cool. I, I like it. The yeah. only thing I don't like about a lot of the Teslas, except for the the hundred thousand dollar, yeah, uh, the the you uh, do, sedan. You have high high tastes. I do. I I don't like having. I, this is weird. This is gonna be very weird. I don't like not having a grill in the front. Yep, you were right. It's weird. Yeah, I like I like that uh, first one that came out because it's even got a little slit in the front where they put the 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 badge. I'm I'm cool with that. When you get rid of that that front grill, I'm just like, no, it just doesn't look right. I don't like it. So, and I I will bow to that. What I will say is, if you when Harley came out with the Live Wire, the electric motorcycle, for thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. <laughs> I I think it's a neat bike. It's incredibly quick. It's I mean they're they're amazing in that regard. However, you know what I miss the sound. I love the pipes yeah. on my Harley, and yeah. I no I shouldn't say that. Almost everybody who buys one, one of the first things they do is add on louder exhaust to the bike. Right, and and so I would I would miss that. It's not a Harley to me. Yeah. If yeah. it doesn't have the throaty, you know, and it doesn't yeah. have to be obnoxious, but just well, throaty. So they're they're working on electric airplanes too, and you know I'm I love airplanes. I, I'm looking for the uh, solar airplanes. Those should solar. be coming soon. Yeah, they, there are there actually is one already. Yeah, I'm sure. Facebook Facebook has one. Really? Yeah, a solar airplane. It's to stay in the air the whole time to be able to provide internet to people that are way out in the wilderness out in Africa. Show it, but it wouldn't be able to take off and land consistently with solar power. It never does. It never yeah. has to. No. That's the whole point. Well, it has to take off at one point, I'm guessing. Well, it takes off, but it never really has to land. <laughs> okay, exactly. got it. And yeah. then how about the windmill ones? 
planes. Is it well, Facebook or Google? It's either Facebook or Google. I don't remember. I think it's a combo. They did it together. It's Google. Google. <laughs> That's my new company, Fugle. <laughs> I'm very yes. Fugle. I'm doing a Fugle search. Yeah. Found that's, it. that's good. <laughs> wow. I know. Wow. That was terrible. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. I interrupted your, your uh, plane. Now, now I lost. Oh, the electric airplane. Thank yeah. you. Uh, they do have, they have uh, an otter, uh, which is a, uh, on floats. So an otter is a de Havilland Yay. product. It's Canadian. Yeah. Um, that one was done independently, but there is actually a company that is making an electric airplane, but wow. it can only stay in the air for about an hour. Um, it looks like Very a Cessna. Cool. Yeah, and the the biggest problem besides weight and length, yes, um, uh, not length, which is it weight and length of time it can stay in the air is the sound. People love the sound of a airplane engine. You know that that flying. I I love watching those those low flying flybys across the airport sure. where you go, sure. you know that I, just growl of that engine is awesome. Negative Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. But yeah, I, no, I like no. piston engine. I don't like jets as much. <laughs> I think I could get used to it in a plane way before I could in a car or in a Harley. Yeah, maybe we'll see. I think I could. I mean, if if I'm up in the air, obviously, well, oh, okay, it's working. And and the the thing about a Harley, which we didn't touch on, was the. Uh, the part that I have a patch on one of my vests that says loud pipes save lives. And, and some people argue with that. And they say, Oh, PS, and it has nothing to do with that. And you know, you have to watch for, yeah, you do. All of that stuff's true. Well, but I, I got something to say about that too. Well, and more than to once, I have, I've revved my engine at an intersection where somebody didn't see me and they start pulling out until I pull in the clutch and hammer the engine a little bit. And then they stop. And so it's happened to me where it has. Yeah. It doesn't mean that's you can count on that for protection. But yeah. uh, in a plane, well, I don't care because everybody's at a different altitude. <laughs> not so much on the heart. Well, yeah, because you're not going to hear them coming until they're right in your windshield anyways. <laughs> Correct. Um, but here's I, I'm getting off the subject sort of. Not We've really. never done that before. Never, ever. But <laughs> I was driving home the other day, and this idiot on a motorcycle mm. – you know, you were being safe by doing that. And I understand why you do that. And I think that's very, very smart. This guy, all he was doing was cutting people off in traffic, oh. like literally getting in front of him. He brake checked a few people. And I'm like, oh, that is the easiest way for you. These, these are <laughs> massive vehicles. And I'm talking trucks and, yeah. and I'm not talking uh, Triuses. Yes. yes. And, I mean, I, my car was the smallest car when he was, and he was sitting there cutting people off. And I'm like, what are, you're just a dumbass on a little little rice burner. If you go on YouTube, there are way too many videos of people doing stupid things on motorcycles from that uh, to lane splitting. Sorry if you live in California. Yeah, I think that's the. I, I'm I think okay with I'm okay with lane splitting if uh, the cars are stopped. It's so dangerous though. Oh, no, it's dangerous, but. Well, <laughs> Okay, how to make a motorcycle more dangerous? I don't know. <laughs> Split lanes. That would be a good idea. Anyway, but I know people swear by it in California, so I'm not trying to alienate anybody. I just, I, I, I would not feel comfortable doing it. Of course, my bike is wider than the space between the lanes anyway, right. so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that's a, that's one. But you can also find them popping wheelies, riding wheelies in traffic. Uh, we got got on a ferry one time with the bikes and we're getting ready to lock them up. And some dude, another dude with a Harley pulls on and he just, he's with a couple of his buddies and he just hammers it up to about 6,000 RPM, just wah, wah, and just held it like that. And I'm, what a dick. Yeah, and, that is that's really, a total dick move. And Matt goes, Captain, rev it up. <laughs> and the guy was, they were just jerks. They're all sitting at the bar drinking, and and then the ferry gets to the other side. and oh. Anyway. Yeah. He's probably he, renting it. <laughs> no, he had too much, too much into it, customized-wise. Maybe it's his brother-in-law's. Yeah. That's probably more like it. Yeah, probably. Wow. 
<laughs> anyway, wow. I think that I think we've reached the end of we Party have. Corner. <laughs> Mike, thank you for the suggestion. It was great, and he knows sometimes that uh, that we're just going to go on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, well, that's and the whole point. Think, actually, it's Potty Roadblock because we just finished the show. Yeah, that's pretty much it. No, it, it, seriously, that that's the whole reason for Potty Corners. You know, yeah. we we've run out of ideas after um, ninety some odd episodes. <laughs> They've so all we, been we, odd. You're right about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we we not only have we reached the end of Body Corner, I think we've reached the end of the podcast for this week. We have, we have. So, if you have anything that you want to uh, suggest to us to discuss on the podcast, please head up to our website and uh, leave us a comment either on the episode, this episode, one of the other episodes, or send us an email to, at PottyMiles. Uh, it's PottyMiles at gmail dot com. We'll, brain dead right there uh, or head up to uh, social media which you can access from our website and leave us a comment there we're looking at them all uh, i did see one from our friend bill he had another suggestion that we're, we're going to probably tackle in our next episode hopefully Yay, bill um and uh yeah so leave us also leave us just comments in general let us know how we're doing if you enjoy the show if you hate the show always remember if you do love the show share it with at least one other person Hopefully we can grow our audience and uh, vice versa, as John likes to point out all the time. If you hate the show and you just want to torture your friends, share it with your friends. Or enemies. Or enemies. Yeah, exactly. We're fine with that. Why do we have so many mothers-in-law that are downloading our podcast? I don't care as long as they keep downloading. (laughs) Exactly. Me too. We love you, (laughs) mothers-in-law. Exactly. All right, my friend. It's been real. It's been fun. But it hasn't been real fun. See ya! (laughs) 